You're not a hustler, you keep getting in front of you just can't flip it. You ain't really got it, you P Diddy, you be remixing. Oh, where just got a new Glock? <laughs> That's a free biscuit. Penny Tupac, know what's up, you know on the mill tick. Can you let the people know who you are, man? Where you from? Shit, I'm tight, man. Boss, I'm tight. Some people may say, but I'm from East Warren, man. East Warren and Buckingham. Kind of back to Cavs, my whole strip. East Warren back to Buckingham. How, how was that neighborhood growing up? Was it nice? Was it like what was going on? Was it bad always? No, it 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 was. It really was unified like a motherfucker when we was young. Like my hood really stuck together. Like, but it was like still kind of separated because niggas. You know, claim they blocks. You know, everybody stood on their block. Like, but for the most part, like it was, it was, it was unified. But it was fucked up too, though. It depend on really what you was into or who you got into it with, and, and who you ran with too. Mm -hmm. well, what school did you go to over there? Uh, I went to Clark Elementary School. Went to McNair for a little minute. Got kicked out of there. Ended up on the other side of Warren, going on the Blackwell. When were you? When would you say around the time of age that you jumped off the porch? Man, on some real shit, bro. I jumped off the porch, bro. Like ten years old. What What prompted you to do that? Was you seeing like people get money, or they was just cool? Uh, no, I really. What, what really started me for real was like, you know, I ain't had a best childhood. You know, my mama was kind of, you know, going through her issues, so I just really wanted to help my mama. So that's really how I started, and then shit. By the time I turned 11, bro, I had got my first tattoo. I was running this bitch two jars of motherfucking e pills, a quarter of Reggie's, and shit, carrying my first pistol too, shit. Damn, all at 11. At 11 years old, bro. What, what was your mama saying? Was she like kind of disappointed in you, or she was like, you know what, this is what it is. You gotta, you gotta get it how you live. No, see, she ain't really know exactly what was going on yet. See, I, I started telling her I was just winning money, shooting dice. You feel me? So she really didn't find out until like it started just I'm I might come to her one day, probably like fifty dollars, you feel me, hundred dollars. Then it started being three, four hundred dollars. So now she like, hold on, like what the fuck is he doing? And then she started going through my room finding and shit. Oh, okay. E E pills was was that like a drug of choice back then? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This yeah, this old this was oh five, oh four, oh five type shit like hell yeah this one everybody was rolling that was the swag then when did you get introduced to gang bang where did that come about um really from my neighborhood for real like my area like i grew up on a block with like niggas on that crib shit and gds like so my end really is more so crips with like g's mixed in between so it was like some of them older niggas off my block you know they was on that so I was already, like, kind of, like, I would say probably, like, basically, like, admiring niggas, looking up to niggas, like, you know, they coming through the through this bitch, nigga, all type of whips and jewelry. They got the females, so I really was looking up to that shit, really, for real, like, and then, plus, with that shit, I really was, like, shit, I just wanted to be just like how them niggas was on the block doing the same shit, basically. Who, who was, like, the big figure around there at the time? On my block? Shit, the big homie to me was corn. A lot of people know him. He 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 fuck with cars and shit a lot and all that shit. Like so a lot of niggas know corn had the orange Chevy, all that shit. They do the bike life shit right now and shit. But um yeah, that was that was that was like my big homie on my block who niggas really wanted to be like then. Cause he had all the nice whips and big rims and all that shit. Like so I would have to say corn. At, at this point, if you if you ran across corn have you ever told him like you admired him and maybe he might have misled you or Yeah, no, I I definitely I pay homage to him for sure. Like I still talk to him and shit. Like I let him know that though. Like, see, I'm like I'm one of them niggas to where I don't got no pride issue. You feel me? If it's a nigga who I looked up to and and all that shit, like I, I pay niggas homage, like but you know how like nowadays niggas will make it seem like you niggas will try to call it dick sucking now or being a little nigga like but I pay homage though. All my niggas I looked up to and, and and copied off of and did you know certain shit that I learned from niggas and all that. So I, I like giving niggas homage and shit like that to be honest. If you can't try to cut back on the cussing a little bit, it's gonna make it hard for me to add it. Okay. That's all good. Uh so 
you, you eventually become a shotgun crib. Now, a lot of people might not know about them. I know they, they, they were the grain or something. Yeah, yeah. And there's like, grain maybe, and is it a misconception that it come from Minnesota with Ice Wear Vezo? No, it's actually the same shit. Mm hmm. It's the same shit. We uh, we we got a lot of dealing with the same people. It's the same, same as that people. For real, it's connected from that way too. How did but, you get introduced to it? What made you join? Um, uh, really, like my uh, my bro kills. He the one who really put me on and shit. But like, he was another nigga that was older than me. You feel me around that bitch who, or around the way who um, who I fuck with. You feel me? He was doing shit. That, Doing shit that I looked up to, and and that's how it really happened for real, man. And just just want to be a part of something for real, like that I felt like was solid. Cause I used to see them all together, and just like how people was moving and all that. So it was like then I already was bad doing what I was doing anyway. So it was like I already like people already knew like okay, Tay bad like he around his mother doing this doing that so. I just got the fuck with niggas like, like you know, it's all we all in now, like, but and then they like the high mood, and, and I was always advanced, like I was one of the younger, you feel me, guys who was advanced. So it all just came together like that. They had our respect, respected me as one of the youngins who was around there already moving, doing certain stuff already. So that's really how that all came together. Did you have to get jumped in? Yeah, you got to get put on like that, for sure. Was there any bruises, broken jaw, nose? What, was it bad? No, not no, no, not for real. I want to say that, because I ain't going to lie. Like, even though I was young, but like I, we grew up fighting in my hood. So it's like, that's all we did, for real. So only thing, you know, I can't really go too deep into it, but it's like, um, you know, you can't stop, you know, basically. Ain't no folding up, ain't no... You know, keep your head up, shit like that. But yeah, you got to get put on the correct way, though. But yeah, at, that's how that happened. Though. At this time, uh, was was bloods heavy and popular? Was it the numbers just going crazy? Uh, this probably when it was just starting to really pick up a little bit. Like you know, you had all the rappers doing all that, saying the blood that you had Gucci Wayne and all them. Like, but. As far as in my hood, no, like East Warren, no, it was a, a few, literally, like that really was from Warren that was on that, but I'm talking about that's probably a handful, though, like, it ain't nowhere near how it is, no, nah. it wasn't nowhere near how it is, no, nah, at all, man. Did the but, choosing of sides cause you to lose relationships with people when, when it start going, you know, each way? Uh, yeah, with certain people, because certain people, like... You know how, like, when certain people get off into they side, they don't, they don't still show that same love, even though we might not be the same this or the same that, but it's like, I feel like it's supposed to still be that mutual respect if we never had no personal problem, basically, like, but some people, you know, they get around certain, a certain group of people, and they, I like, they don't even know you, like, so I went through it with certain people, but not everybody, though. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been locked up? Yeah, I just actually did five years, bro. And, and is it in Michigan prison? Yeah, MDLC, man. I did five straight. Wow. When you got into whatever you got into and you was heading to prison or whatnot, did you ever reflect on your life? Like, may maybe I shouldn't have joined the gang. Maybe I shouldn't have did this or uh -huh. that. I mean, I I didn't have that thought before because, I, you know, I used to hoop back when I was younger too, though, but. Like I always, I thought about that shit for sure. Like it always was a thought. Like, but I'm uh, I'm big on, you know, uh, life gonna happen how it's gonna happen. Like I ain't really big on regretting stuff or, you know, feeling like I just messed my life up. You feel me? Because you can always shake back from whatever issue, especially right. like you ain't, you ain't get life, man, or you ain't dead. So then I'm fully able. So I kind of like sucked it up for real because it was like. I know, and then I know I had did a lot of stuff too, though. So it was like the little time I did, I felt like the fire was down at the least I could do. You feel me? Like I down there felt like I older than that. <laughs> For real. What year was this that you went to prison? Uh, 
from 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 fifteen to twenty twenty. Two thousand fifteen. Oh, two, okay. So now the Bloods are dominant in a joint. Did yeah. you get getting anything behind that? Would you? Did they try to like single you out? You know? No, I ain't really. I had I had a couple people like saying little stuff to certain people, but. When I pressed the issue about it, it wasn't never no, you feel me, nothing that really happened. Like, I really stepped through there. Like, as soon as I came in the door, it was like, I already let people know what it was. Because I was already hearing, how, like, if you, if you, if you claim in the blue side, you know, people, I heard about people getting put up the yard and, uh, you know, basically, like, they weren't buying it. You feel me? Like, anytime they hear that, you got to go type shit. So, me being who I was leaving the streets, like, you know, I left the streets at 21. So, it was like, I wasn't going for it, bro. I ain't gonna lie. As soon as I got through there, it was like, this me, this what I am, this is where I'm from, and shit. You either gonna respect it or shit. We gonna be in, in level five or something, I guess. Right. But then I had a lot of respect, though, because I stood on it, too, though. So it wasn't like I just came in there just, you feel me, horn niggas like nigga, but niggas respect me because I stood on and let them know, like, I ain't going for none of that shit you niggas done pulled with whoever else and all that. Like, this ain't that. And then... Another good part of that was it was people in there who already knew me from the streets and knew how I was too. So it was like you and then you know how I be in there, like you got the out of town ones, the Detroit ones, but they kinda be all together. So it was basically like, you know, the Detroit ones knew like, okay, y'all, even if y'all would have pulled some shit and got down, you know, this shit wasn't gonna ever stop if we'd have came to the streets. So it was like there was just a lot of that. But a lot of them boys love me still right now. I still talk to a lot of them that was in there with me too. But uh, yeah, being that, a crib, that's how that went really though. Being a crib in MDOC, who do you align yourself with? Did you have any alliances or is it just you by yourself or you just or the East Side guys? Um uh, it was so funny is um uh, I I kind of I had a relationship with something everybody like because I was just do you know how it'd be just being solid. So it was like I had I had some, I had some, uh, GDs that was cool with me. I never got off until, like, they, like, rotating with them or none of that or switching, none of that, but I fucked it with the Gs. I had Vice Lord that loved me, motherfucking, um, Muslims, like, I had some, everybody who respected me and, like, you feel me, loved me, but it was, like, um, what I ended up doing, you know, they had the Detroit movement and all that back then yeah. and all that shit, too, so, but I didn't get into that either, like, we had, we was on some silly, we was being silly, man, and started something called City Slickers. You feel me? So it was, it was basically like the east side, the young guys from the east, west, southwest. And then we had a couple solid ones that were, we had one from like Grand Rapids, Mesquite, and a couple ones that were from out of town, Saginaw. Um, but, uh, we just basically started that just to be, you know, just us, like, but, uh, that was it really for real. Though. But we weren't really, you know, we just was making sure we were straight. Go out there, who, uh, work out all that. So, and then one time, should the nation even asked us to have a meeting when we had a, we had a meeting with the nation before uh, at Ojibwe, and they were just saying how they respect how we moved and st stuck together. And you know, we won we won dealing with no clown activity at all. One no, still no, no clown activities at all. So you know, they they liked it us as the young niggas on the yard for real. But yeah. Did you ever get any physical altercations? Yeah. Yeah, I got into quite a few of those. Can you tell us about one, maybe your craziest? My craziest one is the one I'm talking about now. Uh, I had one to level five. I was at um, I was at Marquette level one. Like, I probably had probably about a year left. And um, a guy had owed me $56 hard. <laughs> What's so crazy because he had just got down with the bloods or whatever. But like I say, a lot of them I had already been gelling with and shit. So he um he was dealing with some that was kind of fresh too off into, you know, getting with them. And uh so I basically came in the day room, they playing cards or chess, whatever they was doing. So I'm like, yeah, bro, I need you to go call me out, you feel me? Like, you know, I got something I gotta do, bro. Go and get me right, you feel me? So he like, man. He like, bro, hold on, man. I told you. I said, bro, come call me out, bro. You feel me? Like, I'm finna be at your door. You feel me? So the unit that I'm in the market, we two man room. So he like two doors down from me. So um when when he uh finally come down to the room, 
it wasn't no issue. He don't say nothing. So I'm still kind of steaming from him trying to say what he said while we was in front of all them. So he called me out. You know how motherfucking are separating everything, calculating. He throwing it in the bag. So he wrapped everything up. And when he passed it to me, he said some some crazy shit like, as soon as he said it, I just fired on him. So as soon as I hit him, now his bunkie was from, uh, he was older dude from like seven miles. My bunkie was from a ski. So when I hit him, he was feeling her. So they get to getting all in between us. He hop up with his nose bleeding and shit. So I'm already knowing, like, okay, I know he's gonna want to fight. So his room diagonal from the bathroom, mine right across, but we only two doors down. So we go to the bathroom. I take my shirt off. I'm in. Like, what's up, bro? Like, what you want? So he like, damn, bro, you done fired him, bro. You got me leaking him. Bro, I gave you your money. I'm like, yeah, but you talking crazy. You feel me? Like, what you want, bro? Like, so he he act like he wasn't on nothing. So I grab my shirt, put it on. Now imagine my room right across right across from the bathroom. So as soon as I walk in my room, I hear him running behind me now. So he got some scissors broken half, some green scissors broken half. So he done ran in there trying to pop me. So when I turn around, now we squaring up. I don't swing first because I'm knowing he's going to throw the scissors first. So I'm just flinching at him, flinching at him. And he finally come with the scissors. I can move back, fight on him again, and got on him again in my room now. So now I'm in there beating him. And long story short, man, it looked like a damn pit bull and got the hole to a cat in there. So it's blood everywhere. The scissors on the floor. And then he act like he can't get up. So my bunkie, my bunkie from Muskegon, he finna go home, bro. Like, so him and his bunkie, they trying to, uh, my bunkie and his bunkie trying to get him off the ground. So, uh, he never got up off the ground. So the police come all that and they find the scissors all that. So they thought I had stabbed him and shit. So I end up going to level five for that, bro. Like. I was in Marquette level five for a minute, like sick about so, it, but they ended up not charging either one of us with the shit. Oh, that's cra that's crazy. <laughs> so yeah, so you yeah, went to level five. That was crazy. You went to level five because they was waiting for a bed for level two. No, nah, I don't you know when you at when you at the ones that's connected to them fives and you get into something, they they usually gonna send you over there. And then like I say, they have found them half of scissors on the ground. Next to his ass, oh. so I got blood all on me, and so they thought I stabbed his ass. So that's so you, oh, you was about. in a dorm. You was in the dorms. You wasn't in the pole barns. You was in the two man rooms. Yeah, they had just moved me up to the other unit. At first, I was down there in the dorms, but they was uh, then they moved me up there, and that's when I got into that with him. Because yeah. I think it's like O dorm, P dorm, A dorm, or some shit like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I was uh, I was in O dorm, and then that's when he uh. I moved to P dorm. That's where that shit happened, at, bro. They took me straight to the fire. Yeah, I, I didn't like P dorm. O, o dorm was like the projects. We were just chilling, kicking it all night. Yeah, like the chest yeah drink, you know. You go up yeah, there, it's like yeah. moving to the stubbers. Uh, so when you go to I level swear. five, what is is a rude awakening for you? Like, damn. That was the that was the moment in prison where I was like, reality hit me then, like. On some like like this where my life and came down to type type. I'm like, it's people are hollering, you hearing all type of you feel me, all type of noise in this mode, niggas arguing the game bangers, niggas arguing. It's man, that shit looked the crazy. It's puddles of water, lights blinking. This looked like what we thought prison was when we was kids. Like, I'm like, what the then you gotta get chained up and man, that shit was crazy. And then it's real galleries and bars. I'm like, I'm just looking like, damn. Yeah. Like, so it was a real reality check when I got to that five. Like, that's what I'm like, damn. Like, I feel like I hit rock bottom. That's crazy because uh, that's the same thing I went through. I got into it. They sent me the temp set and they sent me the level five. And I'm like, oh, shoot. Niggas yelling out the bars all day, selling slum, then being friends, selling slum, talking mm -hmm. about each other's mom. I'm like, what the hell? Yeah, that was crazy. That was the craziest experience I had, though, level five. What's the craziest thing you've seen, like, far as a uh, altercation or something like that? Um, Some Southwest dudes got on. They uh, they set a cold play on, on somebody who has, I guess he had stabbed one of them at the previous joint. And they had um they had put in I guess they supposed to have put in the paperwork where they weren't supposed to never touch the same spot again. And somehow he ended up riding in. So when Dog peeped him, all the Southwest dudes who was with him, they um 
they set a play on them. It was child time. And um you got a couple of them standing by the phone, so they waiting on you, they waiting on his unit to get called. So you got a couple of them standing by the phone like they on the phone, a couple of them standing off to the side with their backs turned. And when he came out, man, they got on him like two, three of them stabbed him. And then one of them, they left a uh, they left one of them in his head. They left one of them hey. in his head, bro. That boy had a shank in his head. Like that was the craziest I seen, bro. They left that bitch in his head, bro. I'm like, damn. Did that put them butterflies in your stomach? No, not for real, because by then I was already about two and a half, three years. I was already, you feel, I had synced a bunch of like little stuff like that, but that was just like the worst that I seen. Actually had him had it sticking out his head. So that was like that was crazy to me. But he had stabbed one of them in the neck, though, at the last spot, they said. And the dog had down there died. Like, he was in the spittle and everything. Like, Damn. So, yeah, they left that, they left it in his head, man. I said, yeah, they got on him. That probably was the craziest little situation I seen, though. Them actually leaving the knife in the nigga head. First day out, what you do? Uh, my first day out, I had rented the Airbnb, bro, in Hazel Park. And it was so many people that had came, bro. The people who I rented the house from, they came and put us out, right? So they come put us out the house, bro, my first day out. So I'm like, I tell everybody, all right, well, what we going to do is we going to go to my hood. You feel me? We ended up having a whole block party. So I Damn. turned to Airbnb. Yeah, I turned it to a whole block party, bro. Everybody came through. And. You know, everybody taking pictures, popping bottles, and just everything, bro. It was just crazy. Then I finally had seen my kids. It was just, that was just a surreal moment. That was just crazy. Like, man, didn't even feel real, for real. Was was you ever part of 4-2? Yeah, that's that's my family. So, okay, 4-2 Boss Hog. Okay, Sunday. Uh... I know you mentioned somewhere Sada was your cu your cousin. Yeah. Did you feel any friction in between being in between that, the fours and fives, and maybe people felt like you had to pick a side? Yeah, definitely. Um it's, it's so crazy because um I ain't it's 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 so crazy, right? Because my the the, the foes now is you know, it's three families in one. So, um, basically, bro, when I came home, a lot of people didn't notice my people, you feel me? They ain't no side of my people at all, you feel me? Right. So, when I first get out, um, when I first get out, I had uploaded a picture of me and him on FaceTime on my, on my story. And that's when all the, you know, all the feelings got involved with everybody. Everybody was feeling away. And, um... That shit kind of like, they had a lot of controversy, man. And a lot of people were seeing this and that. Like, so I had a couple people on my end, you know, on the phone end, like, feeling the way for real. Like, I even had some people saying I switched sides and I'm, I'm, I'm fucking with the ops and, you know, just a bunch of shit instead of people just asking me what's going on. Cause like I had told a couple people, like, um, you know, at the time, Cuz one of the hottest rappers in the city. You feel me? Like he got the whole city basically going up. So it was like, I'm, I'm like, bro, if if he one of the hottest rappers in the city, I just got out. Me and him on Facetime. You gotta know it's some type of connection. You feel me? Like, ain't no, it wasn't no reason for this nigga to want to talk to me unless it was like some family type shit or something like that. You feel me? So, um. Yeah, I went through a lot. I went through a lot with that, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Probably still to this day, I got people feeling the way about it or whatever, but I'm just one of them people to where I ain't about to be no fake nigga, bro. You feel me? Like, it's a lot of shit that happened, and I was gone. You feel me? Like, I was gone from 15 to 2020, so it was so much stuff that had happened in between them years, between both sides. You feel me? So it was like, it wasn't really... It wasn't really nothing I could do by the time I came home. It was so much shit that had been done and said. So, and then it's a whole, like, another wave of the, you feel me, whole situation. So, it was like, 
people expected for me to come home and, uh, you know, jump here first and say some shit. And, uh, I wasn't really, I wasn't really feeling it. You know, long as it, long as it wasn't like no real, like disrespectful shit, nobody doing or saying it like none of them, like my main ones and all that. I ain't really care for all them other motherfuckers and what they was talking about. And then a lot of the people that's on the fire side, they, they knew niggas. Like, I ain't know a lot of these, you feel me, niggas who niggas even talking about, you feel me? Like, so it was like the, the, the people who I know, that the original foes was into it on the original fire side. A lot of them, you feel me, dead in jail or, you know, niggas older, just chilling, getting their money, whatever they doing type shit. So this really was like the young nigga, you know, wave, second wave of this shit. Like, but yeah, that, uh, that, that brought a lot of controversy to me, man. A lot of love, feelings involved. Is that what made you move out to, um, out of Michigan? No. No, I moved. I actually moved out of Michigan, bro, on some real shit. Cause once I had um once I had started getting some money, bro, I just felt like Michigan wasn't it wasn't big enough for me, bro. Like on some real real shit. Like I feel like it was time to go anyway. Like like if it was um if it was some shit like that, bro, I would have I would probably would be back in prison, bro. I'd rather, I'd rather go all the way up, bro. I live on my feet than die on my knees. I ain't, I, you know, I ain't. And a lot of people, you know, probably were saying that or feeling like that, but I ain't running for nothing or nobody, bro. So it was like, I just felt like it was, be it was best for me to leave. Then I was fresh out of prison, still on parole. I'm like, it's just a lot of stuff I ain't even want to be around. Now, you know how that parole is in Michigan. You ain't even got to be the one with shit or nothing like so it was just too risky with me staying down there still, for real. I was more so worried about going back to prison for I was worried about somebody doing something to me. Right. For your connection with, with, with Sada and them and you being on your side, did anybody ever try to backdoor you or you feel like somebody tried to backdoor you? Um, I, don't, I don't know, bro. That's for real. Probably, I mean... But see, I stick and move so much, and then I be right when I, when I be out and about. But um, probably so. Ain't no telling. Ain't, ain't no telling on which end either. So it's like, right? You know, it's the street. So I don't put nothing past nobody, or I don't be. I can love you to death, but then I'm not gonna come around and and just be dangling around you. Like you feel me? If I'm around, then I'm gonna be right. You feel me? It's gonna have to. It's gonna have to go all the way, whichever way you feel me. Somebody on, but. Um, probably so. Shit, it's probably people probably still feel like that. I don't know, but I just don't feel like you know anything happened to anybody. But I just don't feel like I'm about to put myself in a predicament to where a a, a nigga can even develop a play like that. On me. You feel yeah. I me? Mean? Like, do you, do you still got a relationship with Sada? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's my baby. Yeah, yeah, that shit forever like that, man. And then she. That's another thing, too. It wasn't like, no, oh, I just found out it's my people. We just, like, me and that nigga been through some shit together. You feel me? Like, when we was young, like, before all this shit. So it was like, it wasn't just, no, oh, this my people, so we finna be cool now. Like, we been rocking, like, young niggas, when, you feel me, before niggas had anything. You feel me? So yeah, that shit, that shit like that forever, man. Even if I would've came on he wouldn't have been a rapper. We'd have still been the same way. You feel me? Like, how do you, how do you feel like I see posts like a recent post to him he was talking about the four two Doug uh dice game situation a lot of people on the different posts like oh he's not a real blood he's not a real blood he's not real how you feel about that uh, you can't say I mean you can't say nigga ain't, ain't real because at the end of the day it don't it don't it don't matter when when you uh get involved in some shit. Everybody who who really own that type of gang type of shit, you know, that shit in your heart. If it's in your heart and then, you feel me, some niggas really stamp, you feel me? So it'd be like, niggas don't know the type of put-ons a nigga done got or how stamped a nigga really is. You feel me? Everybody just looking at it because with him saying, like, you know, I jumped into some of that shit kind of late or whatever, like, that shit don't mean nothing. But niggas standing on what he's standing on, that shit in his heart. Plus, he really tapped in. In other states, with all like so, you know that should be. Exactly. They gonna try. They gonna try to downplay whatever niggas doing, man. 
Nigga, that's that's niggas whole thing out here now. Nah. Niggas try to downplay niggas or say niggas ain't who they is and all that now. Nah. Do, do you still have a relationship with Doug? Uh no. Nah. I wouldn't say so. I wouldn't say we got a relationship. Not nah. what's so crazy because um uh, me and bro had actually had a conversation after I posted the picture with Sada. You feel me? Like but dude, my day one nigga though. You know, a lot of people don't know, but like that's a nigga who I walked the hood with, walked the skating with, you feel me, hung with, shot dice with from kids, you feel me? But him and him and Sada blew up while I was in prison. Like I say, I was gone. They blew up probably 17, 18. Well, he came home 17, I believe. He blew up in between the time I was in prison. So I came home twenty twenty, both of them was already who they was, you feel me? So I didn't long story short, I didn't get the chance to be around what's going on now, basically what I'm saying. Like so we just basically had a conversation and cuz weren't really feeling me, you know, being around Sada and all that shit or whatever. And so we had a little conversation and it ain't you know we ain't it ain't go you know how it's, how I feel like it was supposed to, but you know what can I really say? Shit. You know, people gonna feel how they feel. And then me like I I got love for niggas for who they who they is. You feel me? I don't I don't I don't be caught up in who niggas is now. What they you know they clouded what they got going on. Like I'm still my brother forever. You feel me? No matter how you feel or feel, still like. But that's my day one nigga, bro. Like I can't I can't feel no way but how I've been feeling about niggas. Like shit, I love yeah. niggas. Shit, it is what it is. Though far as like us, I don't gotta hang with nobody or. You feel me? None of that, bro. To still love a nigga, bro. Some people just got love from a distance based off certain circumstances. And that was just one of them situations. You would think because this your family that people would understand that it's easily. Yeah. For sure. And then, like, I'm not even the only nigga on my side who got family on the end. But I'm just the one who got you know, cause like the main face over there. So my shit getting more, got more like publicity or controversy because of who he is. You feel me? If he was, if he probably was one of the other ones who really name ain't really, you know, big as it, as he is, I probably would have never went through all that shit in the first place. You feel me? So by me posting the main face over there, you know, that shit kind of was like, it's, it's easier for niggas to feel away about it and say something. You feel me? Cause, you know, shit, because who he is, basically. But, you know, I'm, I got to just, I got to be tight, man. You know, regardless of whatever going on. like. But, um, yeah, that shit was crazy, the whole situation. Do you feel like 4-2 guys, 2-4, Boss Hog, uh, I forget what Hustle, I forget the other guys, man. But anyway, you feel like y'all side kind of hold on to it more because y'all might have lost more? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't really. Um, I wouldn't really say that for real. But um, I wouldn't really say that. It's just more so. Um, it's just a pride thing, bro. It ain't even about the score or the numbers on no, on no type of none of that. It's it's the pride. Like, you know, you got some people just. Just on some forever fuck niggas type shit, like fuck these niggas forever type shit, like. And then like, I can't be mad at neither side because these niggas on that end probably feel the same way. But like, you never know how niggas felt about people that done lost or shit that niggas done said or you feel me. So it'd be like niggas don't hold their grudges and feel how they feel regardless. But I just was on some shit like a nigga can't make me feel how they feel. You feel me, like. At the end of the day, yeah, we all a family, you feel me? But I got to stand on what I stand on, too. You feel me? I always stood on my own at the same time. So I wouldn't even be me if I sat around and moved off how another nigga moved or felt how another nigga felt about a nigga and all that. Like, or be worried about how a nigga feel about me because how I'm standing on what I'm standing on. So that's just basically what that was for real. Uh, I don't know if you've seen Doug was on Million Dollars Worth uh, a game and he's talking about unifying the city. Was he talking about unifying everybody excluding the SMB guys or everybody, period? 
I feel like he probably talking about everybody because at the end of the day, shit, that nigga, he been through a lot of shit too. From prison shit to street shit, so. Some niggas get tired of that shit, man. And sometimes, you you know, certain, certain shit that happen to certain niggas that say shit that make you snap back to, like, getting back on some bullshit or feeling away, but, like, that nigga been through a lot of shit, so he probably, he probably tired of all that shit. I'm pretty sure a lot of niggas tired of that shit on both sides, bro. It's just, you know, like I say, sometimes it be proud with certain niggas, so. But I feel like you probably talking about everybody, though, because you got, you got some of the, you got some on both sides that already had little get togethers or little shit where niggas have been face to face and had talks and, um, just like you got some of them now on both ends, you know, talking to the youth and all like so. It's some, it's some people that have been through so much, bro, on both sides, they tired of it. You know. Do you, do you know 4 2 Cheese? Yeah, that's fine. That's what's crazy. That's family too. That's family, you and, man. You and him got a relationship? That's my nigga. Yeah, hell yeah. I just talked to Cheese shit for two days, man. I that had no idea that was white boss. Somebody put me here, but I, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. He original Cheddar Boy, man. Cheese really been a legend for real with that rap shit, everything. Like. That's crazy. Yeah, cuz he just did a couple bits, though, you know. They kind of sidetracked his music and his whole little shit, but. Shit, he back, he back, man, shit. But yeah, y'all, that's wipes on, man. You know, that's, that's him on it. I'm a cheddar boy, baby. That's for sure. Like, hell yeah. Yeah. In the trenches podcast, put me hip to that. I'm like, damn, I didn't even know that shit. Yeah, yeah. She's a good nigga too, though, man. And it was so crazy because that's who I was actually going to try to have talk first, though, for real, with cheese and soda. You feel me? But like I say, it was so much shit that had already happened since before I even came home. But um, I was gonna try to put that together. But by the time I came home, it was so much shit that had happened. So it was like I just had to be on some shit. Like okay, if I'm if I'm with Cheese, let's say, and we bump into niggas on that side, ain't nobody doing shit to Cheese. You feel me? If I'm with Sada, and I bump into some of my you feel me people on my end. I can't let nobody do shit because you feel me. Like, so basically, that's where I just had to stand that. Like, but I feel like another thing too, though, it was like when the other niggas was around. Some of them times when I was around, cause too, that's probably really what made niggas feel away too, though. Right. But I already had relationships with some of them niggas too, though, cause everybody that's fives and shit now, they not all from the zone. You feel me? I got niggas from my hood. You feel me? That's. 55 and all that shit now like but like I grew up with some of them too so it was like I didn't get that respect off of oh this side of cousin you feel me so now the blood just ain't finna do shit to tell you like no like I already knew at least probably five six of them niggas already you feel me from the from a young nigga you know so it was already that that love and that respect from some of them anyway and then like I said I've been the same I've been the same way bro like so Niggas respecting me, bro, because how I've been since a young nigga stepping through the hood and just, you know, just being the same way, bro. Like, And then on top of that, like, I ain't never been no nigga who nigga just finna play with no way. So it was like, it just always was that respect, man. Like, niggas fuck with me. And then, like, I feel like I, I even gained more respect after all this shit that was going on, even coming around niggas. You feel me? Knowing niggas could try to pull some bullshit or be slick. You feel me? Like, but. So niggas just respected that shit. I just feel like it's more of a respect thing than anything, bro. Do you do you know or could you speak on where that stuff the friction originally started at? Was it at the parole office or was it before that? Nah. Nah, that shit way. That shit that shit way, way a long time ago, bro. I can't really speak on the situation, but the time really that shit really that shit go back to 05, 06 type shit, bro. Like, I yeah, was in high school. I wasn't even in high school yet. I was in still yeah, in middle school. Me. Hell yeah. Like, I was 11, 12 years old, man. But yeah, that shit. That do, shit you remember, do you remember the East Warren Hot Boys? The Hot Boys? The um, Chilling Boys? Yeah, I remember the Chilling Boys. Was y'all ever connected with them? It was always love with him. Like, 
it was a connection, but it wasn't like we we were never like mobbing with them, like but we've been around them niggas forever though. Like them niggas them niggas was like they was family for real. Like we fucked with the chili boys for sure. I'm chili boys was cool. I still I still actually uh kick it with a couple of them and shit now. But they always been around it though. That's crazy how things can stem from middle school and then transition into, you know, the later years up until this day. Like, damn. Yeah, but see, like, bro, no, was, they was they was in high school. See, me, I always ran with the older dudes anyway, though. Like, so that's why I say, like, my age bracket of people, they, uh, this day little way, but this shit really, I feel like right now, like, so, like, I was, when I was 11, I was with, the niggas who was 15, 16, you feel me? Like, I wasn't, I wasn't really running with too many niggas 11, 12 years old. I was always with the older niggas anyway. So, that's why I, that's another reason why I'm so chill and I'm off into so much little shit when it comes to that type of shit. But, yeah, I was with the older niggas, man. Oh, how did the Fours originally form? Mm, it's three families, bro. Like, Shit, it was, you had the hogs, you know, we always been a family, shit, we running, uh, hustle, and shit, and gutter, but, like, before, what's so crazy about boys, like, that used to be something we just used to say it all, it all, well, I ain't gonna say it all, because gutter was gutter, but, like, this shit started from hustle with us, for real, like, so we was already hustle, you feel I me, mean? like, but, Boss Hall was something we used to say. So it was like a couple people that was hustled basically just, you know, niggas separated themselves in a way. And shit, that's how the hogs basically came about. Like, and, um, but we all still fuck with each other. So it was like, shit, we all together down there on the regular. So that's how it all came together. A lot of my older niggas, they all went to middle school, high school all together. So it just, it just all really came together like that for real. And, um, but it all started from hustle, like, like when I told you, like, when me and dude was running together, like, we was hustle babies and hustle kids and shit like that, like, trying to, you know, he's running, you know, basically up under the hustle boys, they was all older, like, so we really couldn't, it was so much shit going on then, like, we really couldn't be fully involved in what niggas had going on and all that shit, like, but those was our big bros, so we run around claiming hustle babies and hustle kids, so we all started from hustle, for real. Bro, them throwing parties and shit like that. And we just was the badass little niggas around who, you know, who was just shit, trying to basically be like them niggas and do shit they was doing for real. Do y'all do still uh, mess with Twin Mike even after the little controversy? Um, I ain't never had no relationship with Mike, to be honest. So I really can't really speak on that. Like, I ain't, me and Mike never really, like, had no relationship, so. I can't really, um, I honestly can't even really elaborate on that for real, to be honest. Like, me, I'm, we never, like, personally hung with each other, none of that. But I don't know if, uh, I don't know, bro, to be honest. But I ain't never. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I ain't never had no relationship with bro, though. Like, not no personal relationship. What advice would you give people who caught up in that 4 and 5 beef? Um. Uh, First, um, if you don't know history behind it, you you probably should relax on it because at this point, niggas don't even know what they risking to die for or go go to prison for. Like, and then it's like this shit started from niggas who I know. A lot of these niggas who are claiming shit, they don't even they don't even know the niggas who you know this shit first started from on either side. So it's like shit, you'll be basically dying or going to prison for some shit you don't even really know about. You feel me? Thinking that it's some. Even though it had been a lot of shit that happened recently, like, but if you don't know the, the the original situations, I feel like you shouldn't even be off into that shit. Like, a lot of niggas who who OGs with that shit, man, niggas really trying to fall back and let that shit be what it was, type shit. What what connections do y'all got to Cali, or you got to Cali? Uh, my people, they out in Gardena, California, shotguns. Uh, shit, them the homies, shit, 139th, 132nd Street out there in Gardena. Like, them are shotgun people out there. 
They fuck with us. They didn't came down to the city, came fuck with us. Like niggas link up and all type of shit. But yeah, niggas really connected with the shotgun shit though. So they so they embrace y'all on 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 banging out here in the Midwest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they fuck with us for sure. Okay. Oh yeah. Up long, we actually uh, we actually all had went to one of his video shoots and shit. A nice amount of them had came down or whatever and shit. I ended up having one of the homies with me from Cali and shit. I still fuck with him. Like shit, I told him my shit, cause you can ride with me. Like so, we had them down in the city quite a few times. Shit, some from Minnesota, shit, Ohio, a couple different places. Like they come fuck with us for sure. Can you still go that back shit. to your hood comfortably? Yeah, hell yeah. I just was in my head. Like, I just, I just be more, I just be more like cautious when I be through my hood. But I still go on the same block, bro. Same stores. Like, I don't wear no shitey masks, bro. None of that shit. Like, I be, I be on the block. I'm in that bitch, bro. Cause I already been through shit. My worst situations was in my hood. So it's like shit. I can't, I can't, uh, I can't tuck my tail from nowhere where I already been. Been through the craziest shit. At. Like shit, I always felt like even when I was a young nigga, getting into a nigga like when we used to get into a nigga's blocks away. Like yeah, a nigga gonna have to do me right here on the block. Then that's what it is. Like shit, we ain't going nowhere. Shit, never. You ever thought like maybe you shouldn't visit places where you have had to move so cautious? No, uh, no. Nah, I mean, not for real. I mean, it just be like, as hard as is. It's crazy to say, but it's kind of hard not to, bro. Like, cause I, I don't care what you, what you done did, how far you done got, or whatever. A nigga want to go back to the block. You want to go back to the hood, see everybody, and just you feel me, like. And it's a fucked up mentality to have, especially like you know you ain't got to be there anymore, no like. But ain't shit like your block, man. Ain't shit like the hood, like so. It just it be I still get love through my hood, like so. When I go through there, it just it, it it feel good, but it still be like damn. Like and then it bring back memories and all that shit. Riding down these same blocks, I just have to walk down and ride my bike down. You feel me? Like then shit. The flip side to that is riding down the same streets where my man's might have died on this block. Or shit, I didn't got shot on it. Like I just the block I I got shot in my head, bro. When I was seventeen, you feel me on Haver Hill, like but nigga. The same, the same, the same exact spot where I got shot at. I just was over there at, at the same house, nigga. Literally, probably four, five days ago. You feel me? Like so, it be. It's it's just hella memories. It just it ain't shit like where I'm back. Can you explain that situation where you got shot in the head? Like what? What? Like what? Where was you at? What happened? Did you see it coming? You know who did it? Uh, yeah. Um. I basically, I was pulling up to meet somebody, bro. And um, me and my man sitting in the truck. So, bro, he get out. He go knock on the door and shit. He come back to the truck. He like, they ain't answering the door. So, I'm not thinking nothing of it and shit. So, I'm like, back then, we smoking Rello. It's 2011. So, I'm driving. I tell her, bro, like, I'm like, shit, get back in the truck. Like, we finna go to the gas station, get some Rellos. So, he hop in. I'm talking to him, looking to the right at the window. And then, when I turn back towards the windshield, finna drop the truck and drive. I see two people walking up the sidewalk. And when I see them walking up the sidewalk, now I'm like, like I'm like, damn, where the fuck they come from? You feel me? I already been looking down the block the whole time. We've been sitting here. Then I know these houses. I know they ain't come from these houses right here. So as I'm pulling off, man, bro, we talking. I'm like, man, where these niggas coming from? Like, man, as soon as I come out, like straightening up and then pull off, the one closer to the uh, curb, he ran up on the truck. Got the shooting up on, got the shooting all up in the truck. And then the other dude from the sidewalk, he was just shooting from the sidewalk. I ended up getting hit in the back of my head and uh, in my arm twice. And uh, ended up making it to the hospital, all that shit. But yeah, um, that was crazy. You know, why? you know why? Yeah, I can't really elaborate too much on it though. But it was, it was some, uh, it was some sneaky hoe shit, though. It was a boy so crazy, though, because, bro, I really was finna pull right back up. I'm not even I'm not even thinking nothing of it. I was really finna really go get my reload. I was finna pull right back up to the same spot because I'm, I'm really waiting on the motherfucker where I was waiting on. So they, 
the, the shit was gonna happen either way it went. It probably would have been worse if I went down and made it back. You feel me? Been chilling, smoking, but like, but yeah, that shit was crazy, bro. The, the person you was waiting on, do you think? Do you think they set that up? No, nah, he ain't, he ain't set it up. He just um, uh, it was it was a hot spot. He ain't tell me. He ain't tell me. He ain't. I I ain't get a chance to know exactly what was going on. I really wasn't supposed to even pull up over there. That's why. When bro came and knocked, I mean, when bro came back to the truck and said he wasn't there, you feel me? That's why he wasn't there. You feel me? But it was some shit, some bullshit had happened, there. And, and bro ain't let niggas know what was going on, type shit. And shit, them boys was out there waiting on somebody to come over. <laughs> hey, who, who got the who got the better hoes, east side or the west side? Who got the who? The batter, the batter females, east side or west side. Now you gotta remember on the west side, we got southwest too. That's still the west side. Uh, I ain't gonna lie. I will. Me being the east side nigga, I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna be. I'm. It's gonna automatically be biased because I'm. I feel like it's the west though. You feel me? Just because I'm from the east, like, and you know, you know how that shit be. I know majority of the east side females and who's. So it's like. I would, I would have to say the West, especially including Southwest. I would have to say the West Side. <laughs> yeah. For real. What's I up will. on the music too? Uh, man, I've been writing, bro. I ain't even been recording though, man. I've been writing. I gotta. Uh, I think I'm gonna try it one more time though. Start back posting on my page and and, and um, probably shoot some visuals when I do do some new music. But. I've been just focused on other shit right now. I'm going to try one more time, though. Can you give it a time frame for the people that might want to know? Um, uh, By the time it heat up in the city. By the time that weather breaking in Detroit. So probably around about probably April or some shit like that. Okay. 